I am so excited right now. Welcome to the garden. Um, I have recently moved house in the middle of a pandemic. Wouldn't advise that, but it does mean that I now have access to this massive communal garden. And words cannot begin to describe how thankful I am for that right now. But also it means that even though I'm renting, I'm gonna make a pond in a pot. And I haven't been able to make a pond for like 15 years and it's my favourite thing to do. Oddly enough, you don't get many opportunities to make a pond, uh, but today is one of them and I cannot begin to describe how excited I am about that. Um, so because I'm renting, I didn't really want to dig a proper sized um, pond for wildlife. And because my landlord, whose garden this is, has grandkids, that's why there is a slide and, and a climbing frame in the background. Um, so I wanted something that was going to be child safe, easy to do, but it doesn't matter because for a wildlife pond, any amount of water will do. So I'm using this large flower pot. It doesn't have any holes in the bottom, which is quite important, but we're going to make a wildlife pond together. Like this is the best thing you can do for wildlife. I have put up bird feeders. I've made a log pile already where I've been pruning. I've just shoved it all in the corner. But the number one thing you can do for wildlife in your garden is to make a pond of any size. To start off with, my pond is gonna have water and it's gonna have plants. So I need a space to put the plants. I didn't think I was gonna have any bricks, but looking around the garden, I managed to find some old bricks in a corner, which is perfect. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bricks in to hold back the soil. But because I want to make it look a little bit nice, I've also got some hessian. So the reason I'm so excited about ponds, I mean, firstly, who wouldn't be excited about ponds? But my favorite of all of nature is amphibians. So frogs and newts in this country, because as countries go, we have a terrible selection of amphibians. Uh, we've got three species of newt, two species of toad, and questionably two or three species of frog. There are some from the continent that are questionably native or not. But basically we've got the common frog, the common toad, the natajack toad, never seen a natajack toad. Great crested newt, palmate newt, and common newt. Um, and then weird ones like marsh frog and green frog. So as countries go, because most of our country got covered in a massive ice sheet during the last ice age. We don't have that many, what are called herpetofauna, the amphibians and reptiles, but they are still by far and away my favorite. And it's what got me into biology was um, basically playing around in the pond as a kid. So I'm gonna wrap the bricks in some hessian to hold back the soil so that it goes under the bricks. So the bricks are weighing it down and then just made a nice little pocket. I've not had to do any sewing. I've just tucked in the corners. And because I am going to make a bog garden right next to it, this I'm going to leave for now. And that's gonna join the two together. It's all getting very exciting here, Shay, Sally. Now, the important thing with ponds is that you don't use normal soil. It'll fill up the water, pollute the water, and you'll end up with loads of algae. So you want as little nutrients in your soil as possible. Um, when I bought the pond plants, they sent me a bag of potting of, of pond soil, which is specific compost for ponds because it's got very few nutrients in it. Um, that isn't going to be big enough for this. So I've also got some coir and it's basically all the hairy bits from the outside of a coconut. Um, they've taken all the coconut fibers. So coir is great at holding on to moisture in, but it on its own has very few nutrients. So if you're planting normal plants with this, you'd have to add nutrients. But for a pond, it's perfect. So I'm just gonna pop it in my little pouch. And on top of my lovely layer of coir, I am going to add the actual pond compost, which should have just enough nutrients for the plants to be happy in. What I'm going to do is put in some plant. We're starting off with water forget-me-not. So obviously you have normal forget-me-not with the lovely blue flowers. This is a special water variety. It's native to the UK. And 
I'm going to plant it in here, what we call the marginal area. This is a purple iris. So in the UK, we have one native iris um, in water, at least, the yellow flag iris. So if you're out and about and on your government allocated one exercise of the day and you see gorgeous long spiky leaves when then a little bit later on you'll see these amazing yellow iris heads that's actually a native plant but I know that that's going to grow to about this sort of height um, so I'm going to pop it at the towards the back this didn't have a label when I bought it and they're all very small um, because it's cheaper that way. Maybe a flowering rush. So I'm also going to put it kind of towards the back. And then my final plant is another unnamed plant. The good thing is I just have to wait a few weeks and we'll see what grows. And then, because I don't want all of this quite lightweight compost to just go float up as soon as I add water and sink in. I happened, I didn't buy this per se, with the pot, I happened to get some of this, I don't know, perlite? It's basically gravel. I'm gonna put a layer of gravel on the top, totally optional, it'll make it look a bit nicer. For this to be a wildlife pond and not just a bowl of water, things are gonna be able to get in and out. I've just found a terracotta pot that I've smashed, that was half smashed and that I've smashed up a bit more so that I can just, at the back, form a little bit more of a ramp. Um, so that just in case any insects want to crawl out, they can. Does it look a bit ugly right now? Yes. Is it annoying me how ugly it looks? Yes. I'm just gonna have to deal with it. I can replace it. Make sure you've got your pond in the right position. So you want it somewhere where ideally there aren't any trees directly above it, just so that you don't have to fish out the leaves every autumn. Um, you want a good amount of sunlight. You don't need it in full sunlight because obviously it's quite a small body of water so it will heat up quite quickly. Um, but you don't want it just to be in like a tiny corner where it gets no light at all. It needs light for the plants to produce oxygen. And most importantly of all, put it somewhere you can see it. So my window is literally just there. It's maybe four meters away, two self-isolation distances away. And I sit there at that window when I'm working at my computer making all these YouTube videos. I found this beautiful old tree stump in the garden. Um, the things you just find lying around that I am going to pop right here. But now the only thing that remains is to add water. This is where people get a bit worried about ponds. And they're like, oh, you're supposed to use rainwater because tap water's got chlorine and other minerals in it that are bad. Yes, it does. And if you have access to a water butt, then sure, fill it up with rainwater. But it's not forecast to rain for a good week, of course. Now everyone's being forced to stay inside. And I don't have a water butt here. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to fill it with tap water. It really won't make much of a difference. This is a good bit. Ah, oh, this makes me really happy. And because it's such a small pond, it's only going to take like a minute to fill up. I'm used to ponds taking a day to fill up. That's how big they were. Um, oh, it's coming up to the top of the Hessian. My gravel floats. Hopefully not all of it floats. That's kind of hilarious. Um, I'll just have to skim that off the top. I've just made a pond. Ah, that's so exciting. Um, and part two, once my compost arrives in the mail, um, I'm going to make a bog garden out of this old tire I found in the back of the garden. Literally, I was just planning on building a pond, but when I saw this tire, I'm like, that's a bog garden if ever I saw one. This is the start of my little wildlife water garden. And I'll see you, I'll definitely film that. And I'll be just as excited to make that. So I'll see you soon.